Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome here to the launch pad from our TLP Space Coast Studio. Welcome. We are counting down to the launch of SpaceX Starlink 2 10, launching from Slick 4E at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. We are now at just under seven minutes and counting until launch, and we are glad to have you joining us here live this morning. If it's your first time here, welcome. My name is Zach. I'm the founder and host here at the Launchpad and here at TLP. It's our mission to inform and inspire the explorers of tomorrow because we believe that space is better together. And if you haven't yet, take a moment, engage that like button, share out the stream, invite people to join us. We know it's uh, another one of these beautiful in the middle of the night launches for those of us in North America, but we're glad to have those of you joining us here. If you're joining us from uh, the United Kingdom and Europe, welcome. The nice early morning for you. A uh, great way to kick off your Wednesday the final day of May, but we're glad to have you all joining us here for another launch, another batch of Starlinks heading up to orbit. As for SpaceX's drone ship, of course, I still love you, is deployed, ready to recover today's booster. Today's booster should be booster 1061, going for its 14th flight. This booster helps support Crew-1, Crew-2, as well as a number of other missions. Uh, it has launched from both coasts multiple times. It launched specifically from the Space Coast, both at Na uh, NASA Kennedy Space Center and Cape Canaveral Space Force Base, starting in November 2020. It launched from the Space Coast all the way until June 2022, when after a 54-day turnaround, it showed up over for Starlink 3-3 at Vandenberg. Ever since, we've seen it launching out of Vandenberg, having supported three Starlink missions off of the West Coast, as well as the EROS C3 mission last December. As we said, this mission has supported multiple cr crew launches, Series XM, a cargo resupply, it supported the X-Ray Planetary Explorer XB launch, Transporter 4, Transporter 5, Globestar 2, so this is a well-flown booster going for its 14th flight. It will be the 5th Falcon 9 booster going for its 14th flight. We saw the 4th one just a few days ago with booster 10 to 62. We are now counting down towards the launch here. As you can see, SpaceX is getting ready. Let's listen in. Hello, everyone. My name is Atticus Vadera, and I'm a propulsion engineer here at SpaceX. I'll be your host for today's Starlink mission, which marks SpaceX's 36th launch of the year and 235th overall Dr. mission to date. are pressurizing for strong back retract. On your screen is a live view of our Falcon 9 rocket at Space Launch Complex 4 East in California. We are awaiting a liftoff at 11.02 p.m. Pacific time. If you've been following along, you might know that Dragon and the Axiom 2 crew undocked from the International Space Station early this morning and splashed down just about 12 hours later at 8.04 p.m. Pacific time, just off the coast of Panama City. And that was about three hours ago. We hope the Axiom 2 crew had a great journey to and from the ISS onboard Dragon. Now switching back to the west coast for our Starlink mission at T minus four minutes and 14 seconds. Weather is currently green and the range is ready to support. The teams are currently tracking no issues with the vehicle or with the spacecraft. Just below the fairing there, you can see the clamp arms have completely opened up. After the arms are completely open, you will see the strong back move away from the rocket. The strong back, also referred to as the TE or transporter erector, is that large structure that you see next to the Falcon 9. So you can see on your screen that strong back is now leaning away from the vehicle in preparation for liftoff. Coming up next at T minus three minutes, we should hear that stage one has completed its liquid oxygen loading. Stage one locks load complete. And there we go, at T minus three minutes, the Falcon 9 first stage is now fully loaded with RP-1 and liquid oxygen. Now we're just awaiting the completion of liquid oxygen loading on the second stage, which should wrap up about 45 seconds from now. Those white clouds you see around the vehicle are the chilled gas above the LOX tank liquid surface that we vent overboard. 
This helps us to maintain pressure in the tank as needed. And when this cold gas comes into contact with the California air, the humidity and moisture in the air condenses to form those clouds. Coming up on liquid oxygen loadout completion in just about 13 seconds on the second stage. The booster or first stage of the rocket that you see on your screen is flying for the 14th time today, having previously supported Crew-1, Crew-2, Sirius XM-8, CRS-23, IXPE, Transporter-4. Stage four. 2, LOX load is complete. Just heard LOX loading is now complete on Stage 2. The rest of those missions are Transporter-5, Global Star FM-15, ISI, EROSC-3, and four other Starlink missions. After liftoff and stage separation, this booster is scheduled to land on our drone ship. Of course, I still love you. And coming up next, we should hear the call out that Falcon 9 is in startup, which means the flight computers have taken control of the launch countdown. Falcon 9 is in startup. We just heard that call out. Falcon 9 is now in startup. In a few seconds, we should hear our launch director, or LD, give the final go for launch. LD is go for launch. There you have it, folks. The launch director has given the final go to proceed for launch. So let's sit back and watch as Falcon 9 takes our 52 Starlink satellites into space. T minus 30 seconds. Fifteen seconds. Minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition, engine full power, and lift off of Starlink 2-10, go Falcon, go Starlink. Vehicle's pitching down range. Stage 1 propulsion is nominal. At T plus 33 seconds, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Space Launch Complex 4 East at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California at 11.02 p.m. Pacific time. The next major milestone coming up is Max-Q. Power and telemetry is nominal. Max-Q is when the vehicle experiences the greatest amount of external stress as it ex ascends through the Earth's atmosphere. Vehicle is supersonic. Just heard a call out that Falcon 9 is now traveling faster than the speed of sound. Coming up next, we should hear that call out from Max, Max Q. Q. And there's that call out, which again is when the rocket experiences the largest amount of external stress. minute away from a series of events and back but engine chill has started those events are Miko or main engine cutoff stage separation SES one or second engine start one and then fairing separation Miko is where all nine of the Merlin 1d engines on the first stage will shut down stage separation is when the first and second stages physically separate and SES one or second engine start one is when we light the Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage Following that is fairing separation, which is when the two fairing halves separate and fall away from the second stage. So let's keep an eye out for those events coming up very shortly.
Main engine cut off. Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. And as you just saw and heard over the nets, we did just have successful main engine cutoff, stage separation, and, and separation. second engine start one. You should have also seen that we did have successful fairing separation from the second stage. We will be attempting to recover both fairing halves using our recovery vessel Go Beyond. Both of the fairing halves that supported today's mission are flight proven, with one fairing half flying for its fifth time and the other fairing half flying for its seventh time today. Currently, the first stage is on its way back to Earth towards our drone ship. Of course, I still love you. Looks like we don't currently have the video feed, but we are tracking telemetry, which you can see on the bottom left side of your screen of the first stage. And the MVAC engine attached to the second stage is continuing its burn, which should last another four and a half minutes or so. As a reminder, Starlink is a satellite internet constellation designed and manufactured by SpaceX to provide high-speed, low-latency internet to people living in remote and rural locations all around the globe. You can see in the bottom right-hand side of your screen, the second stage is now traveling over 11,000 kilometers per hour. The MBAC engine continuing to accelerate our payload into a low Earth orbit. Vehicle is on a nominal trajectory. As I mentioned earlier, today's Starlink mission marks SpaceX's 235th mission overall and the 36th mission just this year. Coming up next in the mission is the entry burn on the first stage. The entry burn is the first of two burns that the first stage will go through in preparation for landing. This burn should start in just about a minute or so. Again, we don't currently have video coverage of the first stage, but we are tracking it in the telemetry you see on the bottom left side of your screen. Now you can see on the left side of your screen is a view of the first stage. Coming up on entry burn in just around 15 seconds. Stage one entry burn startup. And there's that call out for stage one entry burn. Stage one, which we also refer to as the booster, has now ignited three engines to slow it down for atmospheric reentry. Stage one, entry burn shut down. And there's the call out telling us that the entry burn on the first stage has completed. Coming up next is the landing burn on the first stage, which is the second and the final burn in preparation Vehicle for landing. continues on a nominal trajectory.
You can see the atmosphere is scrubbing off a lot of the first stage's Safety. velocity Safety. right now. Safety. Stage one, transonic. There's the call out that stage one is transonic, which means it is traveling near the speed of sound. Coming up on the landing burn in the first stage in just around 20 seconds. Terminal guides. Stage two, FTS has saved. Stage one, landing burn. There's the confirmation that stage one landing burn has started in preparation for a touchdown on our drone ship. Of course, I still love you. We should hear the call out for second engine cutoff in just a few seconds. Stage one landing leg deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. This Falcon 9 first stage. Touchdown. The Falcon 9 first stage has now successfully launched and landed for the 14th time. And just after landing, we did hear the call out for second engine cutoff nominal one. Orbit insertion. And there's the call out for a nominal orbit insertion. Today's landing marks our 196th overall landing of an orbital class rocket, including Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy missions. And with the confirmation of successful first stage landing and second engine cutoff, that will wrap up our coverage for now. Be sure to check our social media for confirmation of Starlink deployment. Thank you all so much for watching, and we'll see you again soon. And there we go, another SpaceX Starlink mission in the books. Payload deployment should be occurring in just a few minutes' time, and SpaceX will confirm that over on their social media. But of course, thank you again for watching here at the Launchpad. It's our mission to inform and inspire the explorers of tomorrow, because we believe that space is better together. If you happen to catch some photos or videos of today's launch, make sure you tweet those to us at TLPN underscore official on Twitter, or send them over to us via our Discord, uh, both those links. Links are in the chat and in the description. Also, if you are over Vandenberg and are a photographer and interested in joining the TLP crew as a TLP rocket chaser, to head on over to our website, fill an application. We are looking for a couple people to join our West Coast team there. But that's going to do it for us today from TLP Space Coast Studio, the final launch of May 2023 in the books. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.